We're back live at the FSTA conference in New York City. The biggest crowd in the history of the FSTA. Ever. And not a Fino. We count for like eight people because we're doing radio, TV, radio. <laughs> I mean, we got everybody having in here. I know, right? We're hitting all. Look, I'm done with my honey mixture. Yes. So it's gonna, we're going to start fading soon. <laughs> Joe Archino! How are you, my friend? What's happening? It's good to be here. Jersey Joe. Jersey Joe. College fantasy football. Oh, my goodness. I love it. How'd you get into it? You know what? It's kind of funny. Thanks to our man, Mike Demurgis, he kind of helped me put together a TV show, College Football Corner, which aired after every single weekend in the college football season. And then there wasn't a ton of like content out there for college football fantasy especially, so why not go out there and produce that content? You know, it's crazy. I think college football is going to be huge. Uh, Dan Bach from RotoGrinders.com, who's also on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio, he thinks it's the easiest sport to win, actually, in daily fantasy sports because there's just not enough information and quality information. But yet everybody likes football. They want to play. So if you could provide that content, do you feel like you could have an advantage over people? I think absolutely. I think they're such a good niche fan base in college football. You've got your fanatic SEC fans. you got the fanatic Pac-12 fans out there on the West Coast. People want, and especially now where it's kind of starting to gain momentum, people want to see what's going to happen with Ohio State, what's going to happen with Braxmo, who's going to win that starting job. In terms of a fantasy perspective, especially, you got three quarterbacks there. There's a lot of stuff people just want answers to. Are you getting into the daily arena at all or are you just doing season long you no know, i never did the this the day-to-day one but i i think i'm definitely that's something i'm more interested in starting now because as we you know when you're listening to all these uh conferences right here that's the new thing that's the new way of the land joe have you have you learned anything you've been behind listening to the conferences all afternoon all the panels um, have you learned anything that would kind of buoy your hopes of, of college fantasy football becoming something big? I would say, you know, one of the interesting things I saw in numbers back there is how much of a video game consoles, for the college one especially, how much it was used. And I think maybe there's a connection there between the college dorm life and, you know, you got to get your, your fix however you can, and every, every student's got an Xbox or a PS4, and that's how you get it. And I think that's kind of interesting. That's definitely a platform that... Especially someone from my age, I can look at that as a platform and identify with it and exploit. And if people are listening right now on fantasysportsnetwork.com slash FSTA, they can go out and get an Xbox and watch us as well. That's right. Xbox, <laughs> Xbox One. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. Roku players. And it's amazing what's going on now in the world of fantasy sports. And you look at it and you talk about college football. One of the hard things is that the landscape of college football. I believe there's 118 college football teams at Division I oh, yep. level, and it's hard to get injury information. So how do you go about getting injury information? See, that is where you've got to be just live and breathe it because, like you said, it's difficult. I think the Twitter world is why it's so good is because you always can find like those little those reporters who are just kind of in that little niche, and that's they live and breathe that. And you, they're, they're dying to talk about this kind of stuff, so you, you go and you hit them up for the info. Oh, you they're don't even wait for them happy. to tweet it? You're like, hey, man? Oh, I'm just waiting. I mean, if I got to get my War Auburn War Eagle information, sometimes a program like Utah, good football program, they win a lot of games. Not a ton of coverage on ESPN and other things like that, so you find these guys. You're embedded in that Utah program. They're more than happy to give you that information. Those are the Utes. The Utes. I, I understand that part. This is brilliant, man. <laughs> I never because you know, like I sit there and I wait. And you know, like Mike Berardino tweets something about the Twins. I'm like, all right, cool. I don't think you'd be like, hey, Mike, what's up with Jose Barrios? When's the ETA? Yeah. You know the funniest That's, thing. Is, I, I, Lenny Melnick does that at our level. Like, really? Lenny Melnick, Troy Rank, who writes for the Colorado Rockies. Yeah, yeah. He's a Troy. What's going on with? Um, geez, the outfielder they sent down to the Mariners. Uh, He'll, he'll ask, like, when, when is Brandon Barnes going to come back? And the guys answer him. And generally, when, why are we surprised? People do that to us all the time. And that's a good point. Yeah, that's what we do all day long. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny because that's why it's so good is when you find the smaller guys, you know, they're still kind of trying to establish themselves. So they, they're just everybody who responds to them, that's a potential for them to kind of get where they want to be. So they're always happy to do it. Joe, uh, let me ask you before, before we hit the break. What are three tips for someone who's you know never done college fantasy football, or maybe dip their toes in it and like, oh, I got smoked, I can't do it again? Give us three good tips for someone who just wants to pick it up and do well in it. I would say definitely always looking at the last year, the way things finished out always helps because, again, it's one of those sports where 
the top programs are going to most likely play and beat up on a lot of the weaker schools for a lot of parts of their schedule. Uh, I mean, I, I think it, the game has changed, especially when you look at the SEC. You kind of got to understand what the, the philosophy of each conference is. The SEC, you know, it's more defensive-oriented, running the ball, grind, physical. The SEC, the Pac-12 is a lot more open, air raid offenses. So I think kind of having a good feel for everything, going back, looking at the previous season, stuff like that always helps. And just the more you read, the more you watch, the more you know. The more you know. Can we, we get the star going across the screen? <laughs> Are you too young for that? You remember? The more you know. A little bit. A little bit. Joe Archino, Jersey Joe. Excellent stuff, my friend. College fantasy. Excellent stuff to you, too, man. <laughs> Thanks Thank for you. swinging by, dude. Of course. Dude. FSDA coverage continues on the Fantasy Sports Network after this break.